Good morning everyone. How are you all? Welcome to my Wednesday Facebook Live. Hello if you are watching live on Facebook, if you are watching the replay on Facebook or if you are watching the replay over on YouTube. Welcome. My name is Elisa Tilsner and I am a Stampin' Up! demonstrator in uh, South Australia. So today continuing on with our theme of um, or fun folds, we are going to make um, a weird and wacky longish card. Now, I was sort of inspired by one of the one million dollar cards. Um, I think it was Jenny um, from Europe who had a weird looking card, and I thought, gee, that looks really familiar. And I dug out this is from pre Stampin' Up days, this company isn't even around anymore. I dug out um, a template that I had called the Weird and Wacky Longish Card. And uh, this is the template, so you just traced around it and made your card like that. But the only problem was it's too wide for a regular card. So you actually had to make your own envelope as well, which can be a pain in the neck, right? Here's the envelope template, so you have to make it out of 12 by 12. Um, so I decided to make my own template based off of this one. So that's what I am going to share with you today. So, um, okay, so this is the template that I came up with. Um, I went through many pieces of card um, until I got it right. And then at the bottom, um, it wasn't until I finished my card that I realized that it doesn't really stand properly. So we're just going to see, um, I'm going to alter it today again and just see whether I can leave that bottom um, flat so that my card will actually stand properly. So I didn't, I didn't even think about that. Okay, so you are just going to need one sheet of your cardstock. Hello, if you are watching, um, coming in, just say hello, where are you from? I love to see where everyone is from. Okay, I'm going to work in inches today because I think that's probably going to be the easiest. So you will need um, a piece of cardstock and you will just need a pencil as well. I'm probably an eraser um, just so that I'm just going to show you the way that I found it easier. There's probably other ways to do this, but um, we're going to do it the way that I designed it. So because that way I can, you know, keep myself on track. So just a regular sized, um, this is A4 being in Australia. So um, it is A4, but I'm sure that you, if you're in the US, you would just do your normal size card as well. And I am going to make my first cut at nine inches. Hi, Sharon. Hello, everyone else. Kelly, Jenny, Linda, Debbie. Okay, so at nine inches, we're just gonna cut and that is scrap, okay? So, okay, so the first thing that we want to do is find our midpoint. Hello, everyone. Oh, everyone's coming in now. Maybe I'll just wait a smidge before I get started. So I have just used an A4 piece of cardstock if you're just coming in and I've just cut it to, this is regular width, so 21 centimetres, 21 centimetres or if, um, I know that the US cardstock is different size to ours but it is about eight and a quarter inch. So if you're, I don't know, actually even know what the US size cardstock is, so um, whatever your width is and it's by nine inches. Okay, so now we're just going to find the midpoint and of course um, four and a half inches is the midpoint from that. And I actually, I will probably see if I can work out so that you don't have to find the midpoint every time. So down the bottom here, we're going to mark two inches either side of that midpoint. So what does that work out to be? Two and, two and a half and six and a half. I, might, I should write these down, hey, so I can figure them out later. So two and a half and six and a half is where you want to put your little marks. And then at the top midpoint, we're just going to go um, one and a half on either side. So just going to mark them. So that'll be one and three. And that works out to be three inches, write them down, and six. 
that's easier, isn't it? So you just mark at those points. Now, that's going to give us our diagonal funny shape. So make sure your cutter is well out of the way because we only want, we only want our scoring blade. So you can use um, just a ruler and a stylus if you want it, or a ruler in your um, bone folder. So, but I'm just going to use my scoring tool and I'm just lining up those two points in the groove there. So we'll be on a bit of an angle. Okay, and then just score that one as well. So that takes care of our weird and wacky shape. Now we are going to come down and I've got my got my ruler again so now we're going to come down actually am I using my right I know they've got both got inches on them but one of them is easier than the other I've got two rulers so we're just going to come down and mark an inch on both sides from the top okay and then this is really, really simple. Once you've figured out the template, it is super, super simple. Oh, I can unlock it. And then I'm just gonna match up um, the, our score line with the little mark that I just made at an inch. Just line them up in that groove. And then I'm going to cut that one off. And swing the other one around and line them up again. So your two points and cut that off. Now I'm going to leave the bottom square this time, but if you wanted that weird and wacky shape from down the bottom here, it's three quarters of an inch that you want to come up. Okay, so if you want to do that one as well, three quarters of an inch from the bottom. I'm just going to see what this one looks like um, this way and you can also rub out your pencil lines. Okay, and we'll see how that turns out. Oh, I've got one more pencil line. There we go. And then all you have to do is fold. Should actually I might fold it this way, it might be a bit neater. Okay, so I can see that I've got a bit of an issue going on here already. But that is a super easy fix. Okay, so that's going to give you a different look if you leave the base square. But all you have to do is, if we want that flat, is just come back in and trim them off. So don't, like, just go by this one here. So there we go. Easy fix. Now we have got, whoops, I didn't cut it straight, but it'll be fine. So now we've got one that will actually stand a whole lot better than my my wonky my really wonky and weird one so i hope you can see that on the screen how it stands a lot better so there's two different styles of of templates therefore it's probably only about or oh, i'd hate to even guess what that might be might be half an inch but i think just folding it up and trimming the excess off is probably the easiest way to go so there is basically our card base. So how simple is that? And you've got that weird little bit of a weird shape. And because if we're going and working in centimeters, it only works out to be 10 centimeters. So it's going to fit into a, D, a regular DL um, sized envelope. So, so much better um, than, um, you know, trying to make your own envelope to it as well. Okay, so now we're going to decorate it and I have some new products that I'm going to decorate it with. This is called um, Butterfly Brilliance. It's the Butterfly Bouquet um, Suite, which is going to be out in, oh, my hair got in the screen. This is going to be out in uh, March, March the 2nd. Um, or if you want it now, you just need to sign up as a demonstrator. So this is one massive stamp. Good morning, Susan. Um, one big massive stamp you just pop out the little spaces and uh, that is one gigantic one and there are matching dies and you get loads of dies we're not going to use the stamp set today 
but there is one massive die that will cut out all of the butterflies all at once and then of course little individual ones and some texture ones and then of course a whole stack of um, like really detailed dies as well so you could um, if you'd had enough of butterflies you could probably just get the dies and oh be very gentle very gentle excuse me i should have tried to take this off first <laughs> not, um, not while i'm doing a live hey that sticky is sticky just go really really gentle there we go Whew. so i need that and then we also have a pack of designer series paper which you can probably see off screen and i'm going to use a sheet of this paper because these dies cut out all the butterflies in one go how amazing is that and you get quite a few sheets of that and have a look at the other side i've got to take them out even if I, if I can get them back in the packaging. But have a look at the other side. Do you know what this reminds me of? And tell me whether I'm right. You know fruit tingles? I have not had fruit tingles for ages. But you know there'd always be a couple in the pack that were like multi-coloured. Just reminds me so much of fruit tingles. And of course I love them. Aren't they just gorgeous? And you get quite a few um, sheets of each one. So you can make so many cards. They are just gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. Beautiful. Okay, I'm going to attempt to put that away later on. But I've got my die and my piece of paper. Now, I have got another sample of this as well. So stick around to the end. And I will show you the other card that I made on the weekend. So I'm going to cut all of these guys out. I'm just doing a fairly quick card for today. Um, so I'm not going as fancy as what I did in my card on the weekend. So just make sure they're all nicely lined up. And don't forget, over on my blog, I have got details that I am giving away a mini cut and emboss. Um, when you order with me so I will be drawing that in March <laughs> fruit tingles yes I thought it was right it was just, as soon as I saw it I just kept thinking I know that um, from somewhere so there we go how easy is that look at all these and hopefully that'll be enough if not I've got plenty of um, papers that I can use anyway let's just get that out of the way okay and there's some around the edges too so if you wanted to um, line up your die again I'm sure that they you would probably maybe be able to cut them out again maybe not you might be able to hand cut them so but anyway what I'm going to do is line and decorate just pop these on the front somewhere. Probably got one more I can do up there. So I'm just going to go ahead and stick all of them on. Apologies, I should have done some of this um, in advance, but let's get these butterflies all. I should have tried, I should have remembered where I placed them. Dear me. They're gorgeous, aren't they? So pretty. I'm not really one for um, butterflies, but I seem to have been um, liking them a lot lately. These ones are super, super pretty. Hey, Kerry. Thank you, Linda. You always share. I'm very, very grateful for that. Right, I'm just going to use one on each one, I think, um, because I'm not 100% sure. Maybe I'll just use a mini one on the bigger ones. I'm not 100% sure where I lined them up now. Ah, that'll do. It'll be fine. Maybe what I'll do is just be mindful that you don't put them on where that joint is going to go. I'm just going to hold it down. Hold it down with that. So I'm going to stick this one in the middle. I know where that one's going to go. Whoops. Getting caught on my fingernail. All right, so... 
going to put this one, this one's a beautiful big one, so just so that it doesn't hang off. But it's fine because if it goes in an envelope, their little wings won't get caught anyway. Flip these guys over so I know what I'm dealing with. Okay, green one. And there are so, so, so many colours um, involved in these butterflies as well. So, um, you know, you've got so many colour choices to match them all up with. Like this one's got um, not a misty moonlight in it. It matches my fingernails. <laughs> um, I'm going to pop that one underneath. So just have them flittering whichever way you fancy. Um, pink one up the top. So it is pretty quick. I'll show you another one that I did that I got a little bit more involved in. So should do that. At least if you put the um, dimensionals just in one, I probably should have spread them out a little bit more. If you put them in one place, um, you can sort of tuck their wings under or over, however you fancy. Oh, and here comes my son. Do I need that one? Maybe I'll let that one off for the moment. My son is home from work. He started at 6 a.m. this morning. So, and I forgot to tell him to be quiet. So apologies if he comes in and, and says anything. He usually yells at his lizard, so he thinks it's like, he treats it like it's a dog, so he yells out his name, like, hello, I'm here, happy to see you. So, anyway. so I am going to use um, Pretty Perennials for my sentiments. So I've already done that ahead of time to save you the boredom of watching me cut them out. So I've got the good old happy, and I did hand cut that one, and that one's in Misty Moonlight, and look, I'm really matching. So I'm just going to stick that one straight over the top. Um, I'll probably use dimensionals as well. So this one's in Misty Moonlight. So I'm just going to put that over the top. I'll have to... Whoops, I didn't line that up very well, did I? It's going to be a bit wonky. Anyway, that's okay. It's not too bad. And then the birthday, I'm just going to put one on there and a little bit of glue. Oh, come on. Happy birthday. Okay, and then we want some, we need some more opals, because I love these. I finished off one pack the other day, I'm so proud of myself. Um, get rid of these guys. So then I'm just going to pop a few of these opal rounds around the place. Like I said, this one's pretty basic, but I'm going to show you a, a stepped up version as well. Um, but I think because there's just so many of these butterflies, you know, you could put them on the inside as well. If you wanted to, just make sure that they don't see through here. Um, so that's pretty much it I'm going to do for today because I know that I don't want to keep you guys waiting for so long. And I think that's a pretty cool card anyway. So that's our weird and wacky card that will stand quite nicely. So when you open it up, um, you could stamp or anything on there. But I will show you... The other one that I did on the weekend, this is after I finally got my template sorted out. Um, this is the card that I made on the weekend. So this is using the In Bloom paper. And what I actually did with this one is um, la I laid my template down onto my paper and I just marked and just traced around it and cut it down so that it would layer on top of my... Um, panels and I've got that uh, cut out a few of the side pieces to go on there and then for my insert layer what I did was actually made another template and then just cut it up so you could even do that for the layering pieces if you wanted to um, cut out your designer series paper as well you could just cut your template up so that you've got three pieces so I trimmed that one up and then just traced around it and cut it out so um, so that I had a piece that could fit in there. So keep your, keep your templates. Um, you can make them out of that harder um, 
acetate that same stuff that they've made these guys out of you can get these from you can get that plastic that type of plastic from quilting stores because um, they make a lot of their own templates but there you go there are my two cards so my basic one and uh, and a really jazzed up one as well so just going along the same themes so there you go hope you have enjoyed that my hair is falling out um, I hope you have a play as well because it is fun and it's a little bit out of the ordinary um, to receive a card like that would be pretty wow so thanks very much and we will see you again next week I have got something in mind I'm just hoping I can get my prototype finished in time to show you guys how to do it and if I do then that's going to be a fairly long video so um, I love the wonky card it's it's pretty cool so but the one, these are pretty basic compared to the ones that Stampin' Up! did for the $1 million sales achievement, obviously. But, um, but it inspired me to um, have a crack and make my own. So um, it's really fun. It's quite a, a good way. So thank you very much and we will see you again next week. Bye for now.